So last night, I had a, a Zoom meeting with my family members, my sister, cousins, some friends, and then their teenage children. And we're, we're, we're doing Alpha. How many of you here are not familiar with Alpha? Okay, so Alpha, it's a, like an 11-week course we're in. Uh, we watch, supposed to be before COVID-19, we would have like a meal together, watch a video, and have a discussion. And, you know, we talk about, uh, about God, you know, and also answering, uh, you know, uh, question about life, okay? And because of COVID-19, we can't share a meal together, so we're doing this Zoom meeting, and then we're watching this video. And, uh, and in this video, there's some questions that we're being asked to ask ourselves. And one of the questions that was asked was this, what is your most embarrassing moment? Maybe you could think about the most embarrassing moment of your life. For me, I have a lot of embarrassing moments, okay? And I would just like to share with you two recent ones, okay? The first one was in the community days uh, with the Companions of the Cross, uh, I think two weeks ago, we were at Annunciation Day, uh, of the Lord Parish. Uh, so I'm with uh, our uh, fellow priests and seminarians, and we have our evening prayer, and before the evening prayer, we're having this praise and worship. Of course, you know, I was praising the Lord, raising my hands and like that. And a, 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 a deacon in our community, a transitional deacon, came to me. And then he told me, Father Ken, are you wearing your shirt inside out? <laughs> because he saw the tag of my shirt and then the label here. And I forgot because I was in a hurry. I was wearing my shirt inside out. And of course, I was like really embarrassed. Of course, I couldn't change, you know, uh, there, right? So after, and, and then all the seminarians and the priests there, they were laughing at me. And then after the praise and worship, I went to the washroom and changed, changed my, my, you know, turned turn my, my shirt uh, outside in, right? And, and, and wear it properly. So that's one embarrassing moment that happened to me just a few weeks ago. Another one was that uh, I went with some uh, parishioners of St. Mary's and we went to a, an Italian restaurant, okay, uh, on Riverside there. So when we went there, we were sitting in the patio. Uh, the waitress, you know, hand us like a piece of paper and a pen. And for me, you know, I didn't read what was in there. I started, I look at the menu, and I started writing what I want to order, okay? Number something like this, I'm ordering a pasta like that. And <laughs> the, 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 the friends who were with me, we said, Father Ken, that's not for ordering your meal. <laughs> that's, that, that's where you put your name and number so that they could tr track you down if something happened. <laughs> I thought I was like in a full restaurant wherein you put your number and then also the meal number, right? When you go to a full restaurant. So I was like so embarrassed of what happened there and we couldn't stop laughing. Okay, so do, those are two of my most embarrassing moments recently. So maybe you could think of embarrassing moments in your life. And of course, it's embarrassing because we commit mistakes, right? And our mistakes could range from being humorous to being painful, okay? Because of course, uh, when it's like silly mistakes, it's, it's funny, okay? But when your mistake is big enough that you could hurt yourselves and other people, it is painful, okay? And we all commit mistakes. So when we were sharing in that Zoom meeting, we all shared our embarrassing moments. So we all commit mistakes. And I'm sure all of you have committed mistakes in your life because no one is perfect. No, no person is perfect, parents, children, siblings, classmates, or whatever, friends. Nobody's perfect. No, no, there's no perfect family here on earth, except, of course, the holy family. Uh, there's also no perfect religious community. You know, when I was uh, considering the Companions of the Cross, um, I was like searching for other communities, you know, the best community that I could join. And when I saw the website of the Companions of the Cross, I said, oh wow, this is a very good community. And I was sharing uh, my enthusiasm to my friends and relatives, and they told me there's no perfect community. If there's one, the moment that you join that community, it's no longer perfect. Wait. <laughs> Which is, which is true, right? 
So that's why, you know, when we're living with other people that are not perfect, of course, there's a tendency that we would hurt each other. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, we would hurt each other. And of course, when we hurt each other, we need to forgive. That's why in our gospel today, in our gospel today, Peter asked Jesus, how many times do we need to forgive our brothers and sisters uh, who have sinned against us? And Peter asked Jesus seven times, because of course seven is the you know, perfect number in the script, scripture. And this is what Jesus said, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. And then Peter said, what? 77 times? Now, we, we don't need to take that literally, that you know, you're counting, okay, 77 now, okay, after this, I will no longer forgive you. It's not that. 77 times is that indefinitely. You need to forgive, okay? And uh, so that's, that's really the, 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 the thing about, I know it's hard, you know, we've been harmed by other people, uh, and it is hard to forgive. I struggled to forgive for so many years also uh, with people uh, in, in, my, in, my, in my family who have hurt me so much. It was a struggle. But the Lord commanded us to forgive. And when he commanded us to forgive, it means he's also giving us the grace in order to forgive. Okay? One of the uh, very, you know, uh, very touching story about forgiveness is the story about the attempted assassination of Pope John Paul II. How many of you remember that? It happened on May 13, on the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima in 1981 in Rome. Okay? There was this, uh, uh, so uh, there was an assassin who attempt, attempted to kill Pope John Paul II. Okay? And, and we know he didn't die. And he said, a hand you know, triggered the gun, but there's another hand who guided the bullet. And because of that, Pope John Paul II uh, survived that assassination. And, you know, after, after Pope John Paul recovered, he met with the assassin. And his name is Mehmet, sorry, Mehmet Ali Agha. And, you know, they met in, in, in the prison cell of this Mehmet Ali Agha, and Pope John Paul forgave him. It was a, it, that, that picture of them, like talking to each other, very intimate, it was so powerful, okay? And after, you know, after, uh, after the incident uh, that, you know, of course, Mehmet uh, Ali Agha went into prison, after 31 years, after their encounter, of course, John Paul II passed away already. Mehmet Ali Agha went to the tomb of Pope John Paul II and offered some flowers there. It was a beautiful, beautiful, you know, uh, story about forgiveness. That no matter how hard it is to forgive those people who have harmed us, it is possible. Because the Lord is giving us the grace in order to do that. Okay? And uh, so, why should, I, why should I forgive? Why should we forgive? We need to start with the why. Because the why, if we know the why, that will motivate us to do that thing. Okay, so why should, I, sh why should we forgive? The first answer to that is, you know, uh, it's, it, it, people will know that we are a true disciple of Jesus Christ if we learn, to, if, we, if we forgive. Because in John chapter 13, 35, it says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. Okay, and of course, forgiveness is a sign of love. So if you're not forgiving others, you're not loving others too. Okay, and if you are a true disciple of Jesus Christ, you must be willing to forgive, okay? And of course, it is in imitation of Jesus, Jesus who died on the cross before he died, he prayed to the Father, 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 forgive them, for they do not know what they do. That's for all of us, not just the Jews present there. So it's, Im it's an imitation 
of the example of Jesus, of how he forgave all of us. The second uh, reason why we need to forgive is that forgiveness brings healing and freedom, okay? Uh, there's, there's a funny picture here of uh, somebody on that bed. He said, I only regret not, what's that? Not spending more time on the internet. Of course, that's a joke, okay? Nobody would say that on their deathbed, that they regret not, not spending more time in, in, uh, in the internet, right? But, if, you know, for, for me, I've been on that bed. And many people re re regret what? That they were not reconciled to people that they love. That they were holding on to the resentment. You know, and, and, and that's a very sad thing. Because, of course, you know, when we're harboring resentment, I said this before, it's like drinking poison, hoping that the other person would die. But instead, it is you who's dying. Okay? In, in, in our first reading today, it says, what, what's in our first reading today from the book of Sirach? Does anyone harbor anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? That's a question, right? It says here, anger and wrath, these are abominations, yet a sinner holds on to them. The vengeful person will face the Lord's vengeance, for he keeps a strict account of their sins. If you forgive, healing will start to happen in your life and in your relationship with others. The other thing is that when you forgive, you will also be set free from any guilt guilt of your conscience you know many people they're carrying this cross of a guilty conscience because they couldn't forgive anybody okay you will be set free from this and you know if, if and, and what a beautiful thing it is for me you know i, I i've forgiven you know my parents and my, my my loved ones and wherever and it was so freeing i was you know set free from 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 my guilt of harboring so much resentment from these people, okay? Now, the, 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 and it also see, it says here in, in, in the first reading, it says here, remember the end of your life and set enmity aside, okay? And, you know, that's one way to really prepare ourselves, you know, uh, uh, to die is we know that we're at peace. We're at peace with God, we're reconciled with God, and we're also at peace with people, okay? That's why don't wait, because you don't know how, how and when you will die. The Lord could just take you instantly. You could go, get into a car accident there or something. I hope not, okay? But you don't know. While you have the chance right now, forgive reach out to people and, and forgive. And, and when, you, when, when we forgive, you know, don't, don't give like a laundry, don't say the laundry list of all the things that they've done to us. That's causing more harm. Okay? Just, you know, just forgive them. And they know already what they've done. No need to say those laundry lists of what they've done to you. The third thing that we need to do, why we need to forgive, is that forgiveness... If we, if, you know, forgive so that you will be forgiven, okay? And because in Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse, verse 14 to 15, it says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay? And we know on Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, the measure that you give is the measure that you will receive. If you don't give forgiveness, you will also not receive from forgiveness from the Father. And it's a, you know, in, in today's gospel, Jesus talked about this parable of this master, right? He has a slave who owed him 10,000 talents. You know how much 10,000 talents is? A talent is uh, $456,000. Okay? 
10,000 is $4.5 billion. Okay, now, so this slave, you know, owed this master this amount of money. You know, he pleaded, he couldn't pay it. You know, the master forgave him. You know, he was supposed to be sold. His family, wife, possessions, all should be sold and then so that they could pay. But the Lord forgave him, forgave him. And then he met this fellow slaves who owed him 100 denarii. You know how much one, 100 denarii is? One denarius is eight hours of work, a salary of work. Let's say minimum wage, $12. Eight times 12 is $96, okay? So 100 times $96 is $9,600. $9,600 compared to $4.5 billion. And yet this slave couldn't forgive his fellow slave. That's why his master was upset. You know, he said, you know, he was put to jail, he was tortured there until he could pay off that 10,000 talent. So we need to forgive if we want to be forgiven, okay? So how, do we for, how, how, should, how should we forgive, okay? It's funny, I saw this picture, uh, okay? So this picture is from Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. It says there, why do you speak, see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? If you want to be able to forgive, you need to see that you have a log in your eye first before you try to attempt to remove the speck that is in your brother's eye. Okay? And of course, that's also the same with our gospel today. Right? The 10,000 talents, that's our sins. The sins that we committed against God and others. Compare that to the sin that has, that has been done towards you. It's nothing. If we see how much we have offended God and others, much more than how we were offended, we will be able to forgive. It will be easier. I'm not saying it's easy. All I'm saying is that it will be easier for us to forgive. But of course, we need to rely on the grace of God because Jesus, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, there's, there's a saying that to err is human, to forgive is divine. The only time, the, 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 no, the, the, the times that we're able to forgive, it is through God's grace that we're able to forgive. A key scripture passage that I want you to remember is this from Luke chapter 6, verse 36. Be ye therefore merciful as your Father is merciful. 